Hi students, good afternoon. So today what we are discussing is related to the concept of the transactions. Then what is the transaction? Then how we will record the transactions? And what are the accounting rules to record the transactions? So first thing that we have to understand is the concept of the transaction. Now, the transaction, any event that changes the financial position of business. So now, there are two things are there. First thing is the event, okay? And that event that is changing. Changing means it may be an increase or it may be a decrease. Now, changing what? The financial position. The financial position of the business, any event that is changes, okay? Uh, position of the business, sorry. It means anything that is related to the business and it is changing the financial position of the business. So that will be considered as what? As the transaction. Now, change means what? Change may be increase or it may be decrease. Now, the financial position. Financial positions related to it that we have the basic concept if you remember we have a concept of the capital we have a concept of the liability we have a concept of the asset we have a concept of the revenue and last one is the expenses So these are the five main heads of account. Five main heads of accounts are what? The capital, the liabilities, the assets, the revenue, and the expenses. So if there is any increase or decrease, increase and decrease in what? What? In the capital, or it may be in the liability, or it may be in the asset, or it may be in the revenue, or it may be in the expenses. Now just a brief idea about the concept of the capital, revenue, liability, all these things. First of all, I hope you remember that what was the business? The business is a legal activity to earn the profit. And what was the accounting? So we want to know that is there any profit in the business? What is the financial position of the business? How much we have to receive? How much we have to pay? So anything which is happening in the business, we have to record and then record will be considered as the transaction of the business. So we have to record all the transactions. So capital is what? The investment by the owner, original investment, the person who is the owner, who is starting the business, that is investing in the business, so that is called capital. Now, if he or she has some uh, shortcomings, the person has less money, so what he can do or she can do, they can get money from the bank or from loan, or they may get the goods on the credit, so that will be liability. So it is what? It is the payable. So investment by owner no liability is what? That is the payable by business. Okay. Then the asset is what? That is the capital plus the liability. So that is the asset what we call also the accounting transaction. Then we have a concept of the revenue and the expenses. The business is for what? For the profit. So they may be selling the goods or they may be selling the uh, services. So from that money what they are getting from the customer by selling goods or services so any amount which they are getting from the customers 
by selling the goods or by selling the service or any other amount which they are receiving from the customer that will be considered as what as the revenue and the last one is what that is the expenses so to earn revenue business pay so they pay for example they pay the electricity expenses they pay the rental amount they pay the other expenses like a stationery or the insurance or the salary of the people so that would be the expenses now very basic thing that we have five main heads of account it may be a capital liability assets revenue and expenses so if there is any change change mean what that may be in the form of the increase or that may be in the form of the decrease if there is any change increase or decrease change is there so that will be called what as the transaction so any transaction in the business should be recorded so we have the next concept that all transactions should be recorded so all transaction means anything even like if it is a one dollar transaction or it is a one million dollar transaction so anything which is changing the financial position of the business should be recorded in the business so now in the next concept we will discuss how these transactions are recorded what are the rules of the recorded and how these transactions are recorded what are the books of the entry for that also yes students uh, we were discussing about what right? we were discussing about the transactions so the concept is that right? any event that is changing the financial position of the business is called the transaction and the rule is all transactions should be recorded so anything which is related to the business should be recorded even a one dollar amount or two dollar amount or one million dollar amount so all should be recorded so where we have to record record it in general journal so all the transactions should be recorded we want to know the profit of the company we want to know the loss of the company we want to know how much they have to pay how much they have to receive for all these things we have to record the transactions and where have to record the transaction you have to record the transactions in the general journal so we will discuss the format of the general journal and the most important thing we have to record these transaction date wise date wise means what right? that for example if the transaction is for today let's say if it is a 1st january 2023 so today's transaction should be recorded today we cannot record it yesterday we cannot record it tomorrow we have to record it today so the tomorrow transaction will be recorded tomorrow the day after tomorrow and so on so the date wise transaction should be recorded in the general journal so the general journal is also called as book of original entry what is called book of original entry so where all the transactions the basic transactions or maybe a complex transaction so all transactions are recorded so that is called what as the book of general entry or the book of original entry the basic book of general entry or basic book of original entry so what is the format of the journal so here is the format if you see we have like one two three four and five columns are there so this is the concept of the journal the first column is related to the date so here what we will write we will write the date as we said it's a date wise in the chronological order we have to record the transactions so like a january 1 2nd january 3rd january 4th january february like this so we will record all the transactions here will come the account so what is being affected either the capital is affected or the asset is affected or the revenue is affected or expense is affected so anything which is affected will be recorded here so the accounts will be recorded here so the next column is the lf that is basically the ledger folio ledger folio means right like every account has a name in 
can also write as the number, folio number. Means here we will record the number of the account. And then we have a two columns, like a first column is for the debit and the second column is for the credit. So debit receipts and the credit receipt. We also call it as a DR and this one is also called as the CR, like a debit receipts and the credit receipts. So here we have a concept of the transaction. So we will discuss the concept how transactions will be recorded but recorded in what? In the book of original entry or we call it as a general journal which has a five columns. The first column is the date column. Then we have a description or the account column. Then we have a ledger folio or called as a post reference also. Then we have a debit column and the credit column. So all transactions, date wise transaction will be recorded in the general journal. But discussing about the transactions, so the transaction is any event that changes the financial position of the business. So the business may be a trading business or it may be a some production business or it's a service business. Now, recording of the transactions, so we have a rule number one. The first very important thing that every transaction should be recorded. It's any event that is happening in the business should be recorded, okay? And it should be recorded date-wise, means today's transaction should be recorded today. Then, transactions are recorded where? In the journal, or called as the book of the original entry. As we have already discussed that we have a five columns here, date, description, ledger for your debit and credit. Now, the next very important thing is what? Every transaction has at least two effects. Now, what is the meaning of these two effects? Okay, and these two effects basically increase or decrease. Now, these two effects are converted into the debit and credit for the accounting purpose. Now, I'll just give you a simple example to understand the concept of the two effects or understand the concept of the debit and credit. Let's say the person has 3 million or 300,000 or 3,000 as a capital. Let's say 3,000 is the capital and person is also getting 2,000 as a loan from the bank. So 3,000 the person has invested by his own and then 2,000 taken a loan from the bank. So how much? He is getting is 5,000. So this 5,000 in the form of the cash is the total asset of the business. We have discussed already the concept of the assets, liability, capital, revenue and expenses in the earlier videos. So you can see those videos for the reference purposes. Now, why we need the two concepts? As you know, in the equation, can we say like that, that for example, plus 1. Now 3 plus 2 plus 1 is equal to 5? No, it is not equal to 5. So for the 5, it means it is the 6 on the left hand side or right hand side, both should be 6. It means here also we need at least 1 to make the equation balanced. So equation will be balanced when there is a two effect. First effect on this side and second effect on this side. So now 3 plus 2, 5 plus 1 is 6 and here also 6. Let's say for example, still is it possible that we can, we are not changing the acid and still we are changing the total equation. Yeah, it is possible. How is it possible? We are not adding 1 here only. We are also reducting 1 here. So now 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 1 is 6, minus 1 is 5. So now again equation is equal. So it means there is a two effects in the accounting and here very important thing means there is at least two effects. For example, if we say here like a 2, so 3 plus 2 plus 2, so that will be 5 plus 7, minus 1 it is a 6. So here if we write like this, now there are three effects. So still the equation is balanced. So even if we remove just one from here, the equation will not be balanced. So the very basic concepts 
the accounting equation should be balanced with at least two effects. So it's a basic mathematical rule. So the same rule will be applied here. Now, the next concept that we have is related to what? Is related to debit and credit. As we said, that this increase or decrease in these five heads of account, like capital is increasing or capital is decreasing. Now, how capital is increasing or decreasing? For example, if the owner or the investor is injecting the money into the business or equity, so that is what? That is the capital. So the capital will be increasing. Now, a person is taking money back from the business, the owner is taking the money back from the business for his personal use, so that will be the drawing. So that will decrease the capital. Okay. Now, how the liability will increase or decrease? For example, if you are getting a loan from the bank, so that will be a increase in the liability. Now, after some time, you are paying the loan bank, so you are paying back that loan to the bank, so that will be what? That will be the decrease in the liability. So how the asset will change? The asset, for example, what is the example of the asset? The cash is the asset. For example, the account receivables or what we say the debtors is also the asset. So if they are investing in the business, the capital is increasing. At the same time, the asset in the form of the cash is increasing. So, and if they are getting money back from the business, which is a drawing, again, capital is decreasing and also the asset of the business, the money is going out of the business. So that will be the is it decreasing so now how the revenue will increase you are selling the goods or you are selling the services to the customer so they will pay you or they will make your promise to pay in the future so the revenue is coming in the business so it will increase the business for example sometimes it happens as in the earlier videos we have discussed there is a sales return you have sold the goods to the customer but the problem is the quality of the product is not good so what they will do the customer will return the goods back to you so in that case the revenue of the business will reduce so it will either increase or decrease so if the goods or services are sold the revenue is increasing but if there is some return is there or some quality issue is there so the customer is giving back to you so the revenue will decrease and the last one that is the expenses so the business has expenses for example if the business has electricity expense they are using the fuel they are using the like expenses of the like electricity or telephone or water so all these expenses are increasing sometimes there is a concept of the bad debts also that you have to receive the money from the customer but due to any reason like insolvency or any other reason they are not giving back the money to you so the expenses are increasing you are giving the salary to your uh, worker so the expenses are increasing so in the same way there is a possibility sometime that you have made the paid the money and later on some income is there or some amount they have returned to you so in that case the expenses will reduce but it is a very rare case normally expenses increases so these are the five main heads of account and it will be affected either in the form of the increase or decrease and that increase or decrease is converted in what in the form of the debit or in the form of the credit debit credit is very simple very basic rule of the accounting but before understanding the debit credit we should have understanding of these five heads of the account now we will just write the rules and we will do some of the basic transaction like a two or three transactions are there so we will record those transactions so the debit and credit rule if there is a capital and the capital is increasing that will be recorded as the credit the same rule is applied for the liabilities but if you see capital on this side liability on the same side but the asset on the other side or opposite side so the opposite rule like a debit rule will apply here the revenue the revenue is increasing the income or the profit of the company so the profit of the company increase means it is increasing the capital of the company so it will be credit and the expenses expenses are just like a loss of the business 
you are paying the money it is going out of the business so in that case it is reducing the income or the profit or the capital of the business so it will be considered by as the capital now the increase rules are there just the opposite rules for the decrease here it will be debit here it will be debit here it will be credit here it will be debit and here it will be credit so these five rules are there these are like basic concepts of the accounting from starting like a transaction or even at the end when we will prepare the financial statements according to the international accounting standards or according to the generally accepted accounting principles in the USA so for both what we need we need the debit and credit rules so these are the basics from on, on which we can see the foundation of the accounting where all the building of the accounting will be started and it will be constructed on these rules now if you see here the capital the liability is in the revenue and expenses so you have to remember these rules like a debit and credit rules so we just start with a small transaction like investment by owner let's say three thousand dollar in cash it's a very basic transaction because for every business what we need in the start we need the capital and the businessman has to invest the owner has to invest that is also called as the capital or it is called as the equity according to the american uh, word or what we say according to the american terminology so investment by the owner so this is the very basic transaction then the transaction number one we can say the owner has invested let's say three thousand dollar into the new business and invested in the form of what invested in the form of the cash like hard cash he or she has a hard cash so that is the investment now we have to analyze <coughs> that how this transaction is affecting these five things First of all, if you see here, it is the capital of the business. The capital of the business is what? Capital is increasing. The investment by the owner is increasing. So, he or she is injecting the money into the business. So, the capital of the business is increasing. And as we know, according to the rules, the increase is on the credit side. So, we have decided it. So, that is the Right. Now, the next thing, what is coming into the business? So, that is the cash. So, the cash is the asset of the business and it is also increasing. Now, we will just refer to this table, the asset. Asset is increasing and that will be written on which side? On the debit side. So, now we have a debit and credit. So, in every transaction, as we said, we have a, at least two effects are there. So, it may be in the form of the increase or decrease and recorded in the form of the debit and credit. And the debit and credit should be equal. Why it should be equal? Because we said in the accounting equation, equation means both left hand side and right hand side should be equal. Now, we know that how much is the money. We know what is debit we know what is credit and now also we know that on which date this transaction occurred when it happened so we know all the basic things now we can refer things to the journal so this is what this is the journal as we earlier discussed the journal has a five columns so we will start like this that this is like a 2023 and the date is january First, on the 1st January, the owner has invested $3,000 in the business in the form of the cash. So, we have decided that the asset, which asset? The cash. The cash is increased, that will be debit, and the capital also increased, that will be credit, and the amount is $3,000. So, we will write here first because here we have a debit side. And then we have a credit side. So first we will write the debit side. So we will write here the cash. 
and here we will write like account account means we will discuss the concept of the account or the ledger in detail but account is simply the same nature of transactions are summarized that is called the account now cash account let's say the number is one zero one and the amount is how much that is three thousand dollar <throat> so the debit side is complete investment in the business in the form of the cash so that is debit now the second thing is what that is the credit that is also a capital and capital increase that is a credit so we will write here but there's a small basic rule is there that if you just to differentiate the debit and credit we will write a cash and after that we will write like here a capital account just to differentiate a bit we will give the space here and after that we will write the capital and amount let's say this account number is 102 the reference is 102 so here we will write the 3000 so this transaction is complete now we have a debit and the credit why it is complete because the debit amount and credit amount is equal so this means the transaction is complete and here we can write a small narration a small description just for the information purposes even a uh, layman can uh, read that in narration and they can understand that what happened. For example, a new person who is a layman, he has no idea about the accounting, the debit and credit rule. So he or she is unable to understand what is debit or credit. So just to tell him, so we can say investment by owner. So after that, we can just draw a line. It will show that this transaction is complete. So this is the very basic transaction where the owner has invested $3,000 in the business. First we have decided, first we have differentiated or we have recognized that either it is a capital, liability, asset, revenue or expenses. And then we have decided either it is in the form of the increase or decrease. Then we have decided either it's a debit or credit. Then we shifted this debit and credit into the general. This general, we have written the date, the debit column, and then a small space is there, then the credit column, the amount is there, and both amount of the debit and credit should be equal. So it means this transaction is complete. So this is the very basic transaction where we are recording what? We are recording the general entries. We are recording the transaction. So if you remember, we said transaction this is the change in the business it is changing the financial position money is coming in the business so it is changing the business now the second thing it is recorded where it is recorded in the journal it is recorded date wise it is recorded and then it has a two effect either it's an increase or it has a decrease effect then it has a debit and the credit column so all these things and the effects are only five things all these things are complete so we have recorded this transaction we have written the narration also to understand the purpose of the transaction to the layman or the person who is less knowledge of the accounting or has no knowledge of the accounting so this transaction is complete so we will start the next transaction from here also that what are the other transaction for example if the person is taking a loan or person is uh, purchasing the goods or they are selling the goods or business is investing in the furniture or any other transaction is there so we will record all the transaction in the general the second transaction we can have on the 2nd January where we purchased furniture for office let's say $100. Uh, the first transaction we had that the owner has invested $3,000 in the form of the cash to start a new business. Now on the 2nd January, we have a transaction, let's say, that they have purchased furniture for the office. So because they are starting a new business, they are starting a new office, they need a furniture. So they have purchased some of the office furniture for $100. So now again, we have to see, first of all, is it as a transaction? 
Yeah, it is a transaction. Why? Because it is related to the business. It is related to the office. The second thing should be recorded. Of course, it should be recorded in the form of the debit and credit. Now we have to analyze that how it will be affected. See, from here we have to see there are two things are there. First of all, it is affecting furniture and it is also affecting the cash. So what is the effect on the furniture? In the business, furniture is increasing and the cash is decreasing. So there is a one increase effect and there is a one decrease effect. Now we have to see that this furniture and the cash, either the capital, liability, asset, revenue or the expenses. So as we know, that anything we have in the business, which is cash on convertible into the cash or has a some monetary value, which is controlled by the business is called the asset as we have discussed in the earlier videos also, you can refer to those videos also, where we have a concept of the assets, liability and the capital. So these both are the assets. So one asset is increasing and one asset is decreasing. So there are two effects. One is in the form of increase and the one in the form of the decrease. Now we have to see that these debit and credit rules, how we can apply here. Now, the acid increase and acid decrease. So if we look at the acid, acid is increasing and acid is also decreasing. So we have a one debit and we have a one credit. We have a date also. We have an amount also. So now we can record. So on the January 2nd, we can record it as a furniture because furniture is the debit. And the first one we will record as a debit. And the second we will record as a credit. So furniture, account, and then a small space as in earlier transactions. And we will say the cash account. And here we will write the amount 100, 100. And here it is let's say 102 and it is 105. So these are just the numbers to record the transaction like a reference numbers you can say or the account number so there is no need here for the specific numbers it is just for the information and then we can record here the duration that what is done that we have purchased the furniture so this transaction is also complete so now if we analyze this transaction and we compare it to the last one so here we have written the cash in the debit side, debit, 3000 and here we have written cash on the credit side, means first the cash is injected or invested in the business, so the cash was debit. Now they are paying the cash, to whom they are paying? To buy the furniture, they need the cash, so they are paying the cash, so cash is going out, it is like outflow, here it was the inflow. So we have written as a debit. So cash, asset, asset inflow. Inflow means what? That is increasing and that will be debit. And now here cash is outflowing. It is going out of the business. So now what will happen? The cash will be reduced. The cash will be in the credit side. So this is the basic concept. Now we can take one more transaction. For example, a loan from bank like a $400 in the form of the cash. Now the owner need some extra money because the owner has like a $3,000 which is not enough for the business. So what they need, they need like a $400 more. They apply to the bank and the bank has given them a loan of $400. Now again, we have to see, that is this a loan for the business? Or this is the loan for the owner as a personal. No, it is for the business. So it means it is a transaction. And if it is a transaction, so it should be recorded in the journal and recorded in the form of the debit and credit because it has a two effect. Now we have to see, now we have to analyze what are the those two effects in the business. First of all, what is inflow? What is coming in the business? That is the cash. 
So the cash is increasing and as we know already cash is what? Cash is the asset and the asset increase is always what? Is the debt. Now here is the trick. What is the second effect? What is increasing? Increasing is the liability. Liability means what? Anything payable by the business to the outsider that will be considered as the liability. Now they have taken the loan from the bank who has taken the business. So business has to pay that amount. So that will be considered as the liability of the business. So if it is a liability of the business, so it means that is the loan and loan is also increasing and loan as we said is the liability and the liability increase is what that is the credit. Again, we have a transaction. It is related to the business. It has a one effect in the form of the increase and the second effect also in the form of the increase. So cash is increasing, cash is coming. So owner is getting the money from the bank as a loan, the $100 increase. At the same time, it is the liability of the business because it is payable by the business after one month, after two months or according to the contract, the owner, the business has to pay the money back to the bank. So it is the liability of the business. So the liability increasing and as per the rule of the debit credit, it is credit. So now we can shift, we can transfer this transaction into the journal or what we say the general journal. So now again, what will happen? The cash account, the debit side, first one, cash account debit, how much? That is $400 and then small space, the same rules, and then it is a bank loan. It is $400 and when bank loan for business. So it means this transaction is complete. So here cash is increasing. Cash, as we said earlier, is the asset of the business. It is increasing, so it is debit. And at the same time, the liability or the payable of the business, the loan payable or the bank loan is increasing. So that is what? That is on the credit side, the liability is increasing. So it is recorded as the debit and the credit side. So one side debit, one side credit. And if you see here, for every transaction, and again here we can write the reference number, like if it is 106. For every transaction there is a debit and credit, but the total debit and the total credit should be equal here for 3000, 3000, 100, 100, 400, 400, both debit and credit should be equal. That is very important that in the business, if there is something incoming or it is going outside, there is any transaction it is transferred or transmitted into the debit and credit and those debit and credit should be equal. So this is a very important thing that every accountant, every person who is recording the transaction should understand that the debit and credit total should be equal. Why it is equal? Again, I will say that as we said that the capital plus liability is the asset. We have to repeat this again and again, again and again. Why? Because this is the basic concept of the accounting and this is the equation. So debit side, credit side, debit side, credit side. So both should be equal. So that's why debit and credit total should be equal. So now here we have a cash, we have a loan, we have a furniture, the different expenses, incomes, revenues, all are there. So we have to decide what is happening, either the bank loan, no. The bank loan from bank A, from bank B, from bank C, for example, it can be from the Senate Charter, it can be from the City Bank or any other bank, HSBC. So here they will write the name of the bank, like it is from the Standard Chartered. So Standard Chartered Bank Loan, from which bank they have took the loan, so they have to write the name of that bank. So this is the basic concept. We will discuss the transactions again because there are so many transactions in the business, but the basic rules of the debit and credit will be same. So one more transaction we can record.
let's say it is the transaction number four that they have paid on the bill of electricity like a fifty dollar cash. Now the business has to pay the bill of the electricity. So it may be for the office or it may be for the factory or it may be for the shop. So it is related to the business. If it is related to the business, so it means it's a business transaction. If it's a business transaction, it should be recorded. Now we have to see that how it is affecting these heads of the account. Now again, if you see what is the changing, it is cash and cash is reducing. So they are paying the cash. How much they are paying the cash? Fifty dollars they are paying forward for the bill. So the cash is reducing, and the cash, as we know earlier, is what is the asset, and it will be considered as the credit. Now the second effect. This is the one effect. The second effect. We see here the capital liabilities, asset revenue, or expense. This is the expense, expense of the business. Why is the expense of the business? Why they are paying the bill? Because they want to run the office, they want to run the business. Why they are running the office, they are running the business? Because they are to earn the revenue. For earning the revenue, they have to pay something. They have to pay so many amounts like a cost or the expenses. So this is just one expenses there, like a electricity bill. So they have to pay. So electric bill that is increasing and that is what that is expense and the rule that expense increase is debit. Now we have a debit side. We have a credit side. We know the amount. We know the date. So now we can shift this transaction here and we can record this transaction. So we can see here like a number four. It is the electric bill that is on the <coughs> debit side, like a fifty dollars, and then they have paid the cash, so the cash account will be credit. So we can write it as a paid electric bill. So here uh, the same one we have the different account number or the reference is there for the transaction so they are paying the bill so bill is expense expense is increasing expense increase means that that will be a debit and then the cash cash is asset and it is reducing so they are paying the cash so it is on the credit side so if you see here from the different transactions sometime the cash is on the debit side sometime cash on the credit side and as we know that the cash is the asset and asset always if it is increased, it will be on the debit side. If the AC decrease, it will be on the credit side. In this way, we can record all the transactions. For example, uh, one more transaction we can write here. Sold services like uh, $150 to client. This business, for example, they are giving some service to the clients. So service to the clients and the client is paying them cash. How much cash the client is paying? $150. They have given some services, services to the client. For example, if it is a like a car wash or it may be a, like a, some mechanical services or it may be a, some hospital or insurance company or bank. So it's a service organization they are giving the service to the customer and the customer has given them or the client has given them 150 dollars in the form of the cash now again we have to see what is the effect very simple one that the cash is increasing and in cash we know that is ac and ac increases debit the second thing on the second effect we have to know uh, these are the simple transactions we are just looking for the truth uh, like a debit and credit or very simple uh, two side effects are there there may be like a three four five effects are there we will discuss later on when we go for the more complex transaction but then the simple transaction only two effect now the second thing they are selling the services 
and the services like capital, liability, assets, revenue or expense. Of course, as you guess, that means this is the revenue. Revenue means right? You remember that is the sale of goods or services and the revenue is increasing. Revenue in the form of the sale is increasing and then increase in the revenue is what that is the credit. Now we have a debit, now we have a credit, we know the amount, we know the date. So all the basic requirements are there and we can record this transaction here. So the date is 5. So we are receiving what? We are receiving the cash. So cash account is increasing. For how much? $150. And then it is the revenue, it is the sale of the business. So sales account or the revenue account 151 to sold some services. So they have given, they have rendered some services to the client. They have given the money. So sales account or the revenue account. Sale account to revenue account, they are both are the same. So some of the companies are writing as a revenue, some as a sales, some as a turnover. So these are terminology differences, otherwise this the concept is same. So here again one is debit and one is credit we can write some of the reference here so if you look at these all five transactions the owner we just go for the some revision or what we can say the concept just for that invested by the owner cash increased then they purchased some furniture and they paid the cash so it is from the credit side then they took a loan they received money from the bank cash is debit then they have paid some electricity bill they have paid on credit or any other expenses so cash reduced then they have a sale they have sold some services to the clients so what happened the cash is increased and other account also some capital or furniture or bank loan or bill for the sale they will be debit or credit so these are the some like a four or five basic transactions we have recorded in the next uh, videos in the next lectures we will also discuss the other transaction more complex transaction but again i will ask you to just review the concept of the debit and credit and just go through the concept of the capital liability basic in the earlier videos to understand it better thank you very much and if you have any question if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section thank you very much